I see a lot of reports saying the US is in the middle of a housing bubble and possibly already started the declines. Is Europe about to follow? I don't know, let's take a look. Uh, if you wanna grab your popcorn before the show begins, I'll go ahead and wait just a second here. Okay, so there's a report that Bloomberg put out. And in that report there at the top are 15 countries that are listed as being really high risk or what they refer to as really bubbly. And in those particular uh, examples, you see New Zealand being at the top. But in those 15, inside of there are 10 European countries. So to understand where Europe might be headed, let's take a look at four countries that are already seeing movements in the housing market to understand how Europe is trailing and probably following in the path of these four. And the first one is at the top of the list. Let's look at New Zealand. And you see New Zealand in this list, everything appears to be kind of in a, a lighter dark brown there. And that's because um, those indexes for the cost of renting and the cost of owning are high. So you see there at the top of, of the chart, New Zealand has kind of a high combination of both. And in this example, New Zealand has already started to see a decline in the housing market. And you know, there were a couple of things that preceded this drop. So the first thing that happens is inventory builds up. You see an interest rate increase of almost 3% in New Zealand in less than a year. Almost 3% in less than a year increase in interest rates. And this is equated to, <clears throat> excuse me, a 2.5% drop in the price of housing in the second quarter of 2022 alone. And the anticipated total drop in New Zealand is 15%. This is by the midpoint of 2023, which is a significant drop in the price of real estate. But of the four that we have listed here, it's not the biggest. If you wanna look at which one had a really high anticipated reduction in the cost of housing, you don't have to look any further north of America than Canada. Canada has already started to see double digit declines in the cost of real estate. This was foreshadowed by a couple of provinces who had huge uh, reduction in the numbers of home sales. So you saw in Ontario, 38% reduction in the number of home sales. In British Columbia, there was a 45% reduction in the number of home sales. That's huge. That's a huge reduction. What's followed after this you know, slowing sales, you started to see that interest rates were rising and the Royal Bank of Canada has predicted a 42% reduction in home prices by the end of this, what they call peak to trough. So peak to trough being early 2021 through the end of this market down cycle to be 42%. And this would be a bigger drop than any one of the preceding four drops in the real estate market in Canada's recent history. So it is expected to be large. And I'm not a doomsayer here because yes, you see the market go up, everybody feels very comfortable. The markets do go up and they do come down. So it's not, an, it's not uncommon for the market to go up and for the market to have downward fluctuations. And just because this might be a downward fluctuation doesn't mean that eventually that market will go back up again. So if you have a property in one of these countries we're talking about, could be at the time that you decide to sell years from now or soon, you know, depending on the price you pay for your house, you could get a very good return. So I'm not a real estate agent or a financial uh, advisor. So these are my own personal research that I've done online. And it's confirmed a number of thoughts for me, which I'll get into later when, it, when I talk about in the next video about actually buying a home myself in Europe and what those qualifications were for me to buy and select a home. So the third market I wanted to talk about was Australia. Moving back down into the Southern Hemisphere, you're gonna see that Australia has already had a 4% drop forecasted for 2022, and a 14% drop forecasted for 2023. Combined, they expect a 20% reduction 
in the price of homes. So, you know, clearly not as severe as what you're seeing in Canada with a projection of over 40% there, but a 20% drop is still significant. And this would lead into our fourth market that I wanted to look at, which is the biggest of these four, and that's the United States. And the United States is a huge country with a large population, and often you'll find that what happens in one region of the country is not necessarily reflected in another region. And when you see the totals taken, that percentage, you could have a huge percentage change in one region, a very small percentage change in another, and that equates to this kind of average that you see building up in there. So in the United States, where the interest rate has not gone up as much as it has in New Zealand, for example, it's gone up two percentage points. And in that two percentage points, some are already saying this is the biggest housing contraction since 2006. Moody's is predicting a 0% increase in home prices next year. Now that's a 0% increase in home prices if the US doesn't move into a recession. Well, as of the second quarter of 2022, one way to tell if the United States is in a recession is two consecutive quarters of GDP contraction. That's not the only way that you qualify if the United States is in a recession, but it's a commonly held view that if you have two consecutive quarters of reduction in the GDP, it signals that the, that the US is in a recession. If you take that as your guide, then we already are in a recession in the United States. The prediction, according uh, to this forecast from Moody Analytics, is that the US just had, you know, if they have those two drops in uh, two, two quarters of GDP drops, which happened in the first and second quarter of 2022, this is a common way of referring to a recession in the United States. They'll say, if you have two consecutive quarters of reduction in the GDP or contraction, then we're in a recession. Other people will say that's not the only thing to look at when you're talking about whether or not a recession is here. And it's true, time will tell whether or not we're in a true recession or not. But Moody Analytics had said, without a recession, we can expect a flat home price next year in the United States. With the recession, the prediction is a 15 to 20% reduction in home prices. In 2008, when we went through the other cycle, that was a 19% overall reduction in home prices in the US. So you can see this is a very significant adjustment in the price of US homes. And a lot of this is due to the fact that you have raising interest rates. And what are the symptoms of, of this change? So you'll see between March and July of 2022, there was a 350% increase in the number of unsold units in San Francisco and Austin, Texas. And 60% were considered overvalued in Austin, Texas. So that's a huge increase. So what you're seeing right now you're seeing the volume of units increase because sellers are putting their home on the markets the way they normally would. Buyers are saying, mm, I'm not ready to buy right now. Prices are really high. I think they're gonna come down. And they look at, the, they look at somebody's property and five doors down, there's another property in that same development that has the same floor plan and it's selling for $20,000 less. Which property are they going to take? So then a homeowner is faced with either taking the property off the market, but if you're moving across the country or three states away and you need to sell your property, a lot of times people feel that they don't have a choice. They need to sell that property. They will put it on the market. They will accept the price cut and it will sell. So right now there is a standoff forming with the volume increasing sellers saying, no, I expect, I think I should get this price. And the buyer is saying, mm, that price is too high. Or they go in to get their mortgage and they were pre-approved last year for a four bedroom, three bathroom house. 
Now they go in to renew their approval because they're actually going to buy. And what's happened? They're no longer approved for that four bedroom, three bathroom. Their salary, their income has remained the same, but their buying power because of the increase in interest has changed. So instead of a four bedroom, three bathroom, they're being told they can afford a three bedroom, two bathroom house. And that's a big change. It's a big adjustment for a lot of people when they go back into the market looking to buy their first home, especially. And you're going to find that these price changes are very different by region. So two examples that were given were California, where you saw in San Francisco the inventory rates jumping dramatically, Austin, Texas, where you see you know, a huge number of homes being built in Texas, and in Austin you saw a huge number of people moving in, pricing going through the roof, and as the price went through the roof it became less affordable and more people when interest rates started rising, began to say, mm, I don't know that I'm ready to buy. I'm going to wait for rates either to come down or for the price to come down so I can still buy that house that I was anticipating I should get for my money. And then in the Northeast, not as much because prices don't fluctuate in the Northeast as, you know, in most areas of the Northeast as much as they would in the South or the Southwest or the, those areas of the country. So if you're looking at um, that compared to Europe, again, there were 10 countries that were listed inside the top 15. And they were countries like Czech Republic, Hungary, um, Portugal, um, Austria, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, Germany. And these countries have a very bubbly, what's considered a very bubbly housing market right now, where it's very expensive to buy, and it's also very expensive to rent in many of these company, countries as well. And because of that, it becomes more price sensitive. So if you're going to start raising rates, then people really have to think about what they can afford. So in some of these countries where you have adjustables, in six months to a year, you're going to see the adjustables change. And with the increase in interest rates, if they're coming, that will affect what somebody can afford if they already own that property. And it also affect them if at that point they're just looking to get into the market. And I want to give you an example of how much of an effect that can be. So in the US, for example, if you and the, the US dollar and the euro are almost the same value right now in 2022 in August. Uh, and you'll, you'll find that if you bought a $500,000 house in the United States, you put 20% down and you were getting a mortgage, you might find a payment at 1% interest of $1,286. You increase that 1%, it becomes $1,478. You increase that by 1% to 3%, that payment goes from 1,286 to 1,686. And it's very easy to see how what was once affordable with an increase in interest rates means something's no longer affordable. That's a 25% increase in the cost of the mortgage, just principal and interest. And in the United States, those interest rates would be higher. Maybe you're going from 3 to 5%. And in the United States, if you're going from 3 to 5%, that payment would be 1,686, and it would go up to 2,147. That's a huge increase. Again, you know, it's 25% increase in the value, in the price of your mortgage, but for the same value of a home. And that's a, that's a difficult thing for somebody to take if they've already got a mortgage. Why would you want to increase it if you have to pay these higher rates and you've got a fixed rate mortgage? So the question is, what is anticipated for Europe? Are they going to be raising interest rates the way that they have in New Zealand and Canada and the United States in attempts to slow the, the startling rise of housing prices? So if you look at um, the European Union, they did raise, they were anticipated to raise the interest rate by 0.25% but they raised it by half a percent, which was kind of a surprise when that happened in July. 
And now the European Central Bank is expected to raise it another half percent in September. And it's anticipated that by the midpoint of 2023, you're going to see uh, an interest rate 2% higher than what it was before the first July increase. That's a two percentage interest rates. And as you remember, we just went through that example of what happens when pricing, when interest rates go up 2% and you saw the dramatic change in the cost of the mortgage. Not only that, but uh, Austria's Robert Holzman from the European Central Bank government council member, he said that if inflation doesn't fall below 5% by the middle of 2023, you can anticipate further increases in the interest rate after that. So that's a pretty dramatic statement. And it tells you right now, home prices since 2011 to 2021 were up 42% in Europe. It's a huge increase overall. And if you look at rent, rent was up less than half of that. Rent was up 16% during that same period. And if you look at some specific example, Estonia, for example, in 2010, 2011 was kind of down at the bottom of the trough of the last drop for pricing there. And then it began to go back up again. And right now, um, since 2011 to 2021, there was a 174% increase in prices in Estonia. Luxembourg had a 131% increase in prices. It's huge. Um, and prices have more than doubled in the top seven countries on that list. So huge changes are what you're seeing there in the cost of housing. And the question is, if you see that increase in the interest rates coming, you see the increase in the amount that somebody will have to pay for a property, then you see the affordability index being very high right now, meaning it's difficult for somebody to afford now. It would be much more difficult for somebody to afford the same property in the future at a higher interest rate. And that's why I see interest rates in the EU affecting the value of homes in this area. Um, again, I'm not an expert. This is my own research that I'm doing for, for myself and for, for purchasing my own property. So you would need to look at this yourself or talk to an expert as well to confirm this. But from what I see, it's a bubble here. And what you're looking at, other countries like Greece, Italy, and Spain have not seen large increases in the, in the values of uh, property there. As a matter of fact, uh, since 2011 to 2021, the value of property in Greece has fallen by 23%. The value of property in Italy has fallen by 10%, and the value in Cyprus by 8%. And so if you look at this chart, you'll notice near the bottom, 29 out of 30 uh, on this list that was published by Bloomberg, Italy is down near the bottom because it's still showing as more affordable, more affordable for rent, more affordable um, uh, for, for uh, purchasing. And Greece is a little bit higher up there. You see that those factors starting to go into the brown there for renting especially. And with Italy, they have not seen those huge price increases. 10% decrease in price in those 10 year period from 2011 to 2022. And I'll provide a link up here. You can check out um, a video I did that gave a great option for retirees who wanna to move to Italy. Incredible uh, opportunities with tax rates and visas for uh, moving to Italy. Also another country that was seeing reductions there was Greece. And I also have a video related to options for people who want to move to Greece. And that uh, they are also offering really great opportunities uh, for people who want to move there and great tax opportunities if you're retired. Spain also had a very flat increase in the value of real estate in that 10 year period. Um, they are looking at a new program for digital nomads. 
Right now that program has not been released, but once it is, hopefully we'll do a video on that so we can understand what opportunities people might have in uh, Spain if they want to move over there. So we've talked about what happens with this increase in interest rates. You know, in the United States especially, usually we see a market cycle go through 12 to 13 years. We see the leading into the bust, you see prices ramp up. You see people feeling like prices are just gonna always continue to go up and that there's no downward swing. Uh, confidence is very high. Uh, and usually when that bus cycle starts, it takes about three years for it to settle somewhere around there. And then you start to see prices go back up again. Once people are confident that it's okay to buy and it's uh, the market is near its lows or at a point where it uh, makes sense to purchase. And it's likely, I think, you know, that we might see a similar process happen in Europe. Again, I'm not an expert. I do this research for, uh, for my own benefit, but also to share with you. And I would love to hear your thoughts and comments on this. If you expect, well, first of all, if you're looking to buy in Europe, have you bought? And did you find that you got a really great interest rate? And if you haven't bought, are you expecting to buy now? Or are you looking to wait for a while? And where is it that you're looking to buy? Are you looking to buy in Canada or New Zealand, the United States, Europe? Be really interested to hear what your expectations are. And the next video I want to do is on my own home search in Portugal. And what were the top five reasons that I would look to buy? And what are those qualifications, those top five, in deciding on buying? So thanks again for watching the video. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons. And I look forward to talking with you again soon. Bye now.